talking about CPU overload, recording two different ways. In this video, we're going to dive into how I built a Max for Live device in Ableton 12 suite in order to reduce CPU load while I have a ton of instruments loaded into my set for a live looping type setup. So I want to have all my instruments sort of ready to go, ready to be activated. And so we're, I'm going to dig into the Max for Live device that I used um, so that it's not just like bashing my computer um, with all of the at the ready instruments. All right, so we're going to dive into Ableton. So how I have my live set set up is that I have my drums uh, over here in a chain um, as well as a bass rack. I actually have a piano rack uh, with different instruments loaded up in here. Uh, I have an organ rack, keyboards, uh, and then some other instruments, synths. I have a synth rack of synths that I like to use, right? A bunch of different instruments. And then I have my live looping setup. And I have that set up so that I can, here we go. I have this, when I click the plus button, it records everything that's coming in from send C. So if I open up my return tracks here, you can see I have this looper in out, right? And what I'm doing is that I'm sending uh, all of these instruments through uh, C. I turn up C in order to send the audio to a track. My initial solution was to put something on the master track, have it check every single track and determine, okay, is the arm, is each track armed? And if it is armed, then we're going to send the, the C send, which is the looper send through the routing. And then we record that sound, right? Basically recurringly, we're sending off a number of bangs with a metronome, the Metro 2000 here, 2000 milliseconds. So it's basically two seconds. Then we're going through every single track. We're getting every track number that we have. And then on the left here, we're testing every one of those tracks to see if the track is armed. And then we're setting that value to the output of if it's armed. If it's armed, it's gonna output a one. If it's not armed, it's gonna output a zero, right? And so then we're attaching that armed status into the mixer device of that same track and we're setting it we're setting the c send the third send to uh be this object that the arm is influencing so if the arm is on then that the c will send that was my initial attempt then that didn't work because it just ramped up my cpu because it's checking all the time uh if it is being sent and that so what i discovered was basically through a lot of research that having devices on uh, was a uh, was taking up CPU load, and I was basically running consistently at forty five to sixty five, especially because I was trying to keep my buffer size really low so I could do the live looping without too much latency. Uh, and so, but having all these instruments ready to play, you know, did not did not help with me being able to uh, lower my CPU. So I was like, okay, how do I turn off these instruments when they're not in use, when the armed track is not recording, it's not armed. And that's when I went down this rabbit hole to build this device. So right here, what we got going is we put this device on every single software instrument or other thing that we want to, uh, including like um, microphone inputs. And then the, the long and the short of it is that we're doing two things with this device. Number one, we're setting up the send track that goes to all my looper recording devices. And then secondarily, we're turning off and on any devices that are on that track. And then yet yeah, when it's disarmed for recording, it turns off all the devices. And because I have 20 or 30 uh, instruments, now I'm reducing basically all of that to 
like no CPU usage until I turn it on. And then there's like a little spike in CPU usage, I suppose, but it's it's minimal. So I'm, I'm going to walk through how this uh, how this works here. So we're doing live.path. So we're determining the path inside of the, the live object model system. Um, and we're trying to figure out what is the path of the live set. So within the live set of this device, canonical parent. So this device is meaning the actual max for live device. So this device, the patch that we're inside of right now, that's what we're working on. And then we want to find the canonical parent, which ends up being the track on which that this device is on. So what we're doing is we are um, figuring out is the device armed or not armed? This is a lot simpler than the other one because I don't need to go through every single track. It's just finding this current track. Is it on? Is it not on? And so it determines if it's on or not. Is the track armed? We're going to go over and we're going to talk about the C send, the looper send uh, first. So if it's one, and this basically tests if the, the select basically tests if the number or the output from the previous step is equal to whatever this number or uh, defined variable is. So if it's one, we're going to send out a bang. Um, and if it's zero, uh, we're going to send out a bang or if it's basically anything that's not one. Uh, so you can see that actually right here. If you see, if I hover over bang if output matches one, and then bang if output uh, input, if output doesn't, if input doesn't match rather. So what I'm doing, I'm basically banging this no matter what, because we're basically defining again, the live.path live set, this device canonical parent mixer device sends to, which this represents again, the C send inside of the mixer. And we're defining that object here and we want to control this live dot object. Then if it's one, we're actually sending, uh, and setting the value of that live object as one. So we're turning that all the way to 100 basically. And then the same thing over here, if it doesn't match, we're setting the value and we're sending that into the live dot object. These defer low, um, objects here. These basically, it defers the message being sent. I'm not entirely sure what it does, but every time I don't put this in here, it gives me a little error uh, inside of the max console. Um, let me see, I might have to move this a little bit so you can see it, but the max console there gives me a little error. So let's go over. So that's the easy part, honestly. Let's go over to turning on and off devices when a track is not armed. So we're going to check if it's armed, right? If it is armed, then we're going to set off a bang. Okay. And we're going to, again, we're sending the, the ID of this device's parent. So this tracks uh, device and we're out we're outputting it to this live object. Then we're sending a message at the same time and we're saying get devices. So this is going to output the devices IDs on that track. So whatever, uh, whatever devices you have, um, that's what it's going to output. And I think that I can, oh, you know, and a, a quick trick is basically if you use this print object, um, then you can just see kind of track your work. So, so I've opened up the, the console here so you can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and enter this. So we can see here the devices that are on this particular track, um, are just device ID four, two, nine, one over here and, uh, eight, nine, eight, seven. So then we're going to take those device IDs. Then we're going to output, uh, just the ID number. And when you use route, it basically removes, it outputs everything that's not this word. So you can see in print, 
it, it sent this live object outputs devices IDs 4291 and ID 8987. By using route devices, it removes the devices and outputs the rest of the message. And then this iter basically separates um, all of these into different um, different messages. So I can show you that here as well. And we'll just get the devices again. So you can see it sends out ID 4249, ID, and then the 8987 again. And let's just keep going down here. And then again, we're removing anything that is ID. And then we're basically just sending out just the ID number alone, right? And so we have to go through, I, there must be another way to do it, but this is just how I did it. Um, but this is how I removed uh, the different uh, sort of particles that I needed to remove. And then before we move on, I'll show you over here, basically at the same time that we're finding out the IDs of the various devices that are on the track, we're also um, finding out what the ID is of this current device, right? So the actual max patch, because we don't want to turn off that max patch because then it will stop working. I believe sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but um, I built this in. So basically it compares, are these the same? So we can see here um, like this. And so it basically only outputs, as you can see, the 4291, which ends up being um, not the current device. So I guess we just have one, only one more device on this, uh, on this track, for instance. But if there are multiple, then we're doing this iteration piece again, which is going to output um, each of the devices IDs separately. And again, excluding the device that is the, the, the current one that we're working on. Okay, then this pipe 100 delays messages by uh, 100 milliseconds. And this is just so that the rest of this patch has enough time to process before we move into the next, um, before it turns off the next device. Because otherwise, uh, when I was creating this, it was turning off one device, but not the other, because it was just going so quickly through um, the rest of the patch um, and so quickly th through changing the object. And then we get to that in a second. Um, so what we do now here is you can see over here, we um, basically re-add the ID, uh, the, the text ID by saying prepend ID. And then we feed that into a live object which basically defines each device. And then at the same time, we're uh, firing off this message to that object and saying, get the parameters of that device. So once I click uh, pr get parameters, you can see that this outputs all of the different parameters that we can change uh, inside, of the, uh, inside of that device. And so that can be anything from you know, the filter, macros, um, on, off, as well as a, a variety of other uh, of other pieces. And we're getting all these parameters, but we just need, what I found out is basically that it is the third of this list. So this zl.nth um, basically outputs um, the nth element of a list. So this is gonna be the third element of the list. Uh, and so out of these parameter IDs, we actually are going to print uh, just the third one. So let me see if we can do that here. Yes, one of these gets counted in this ZL as a different object. So we have parameters as the number one item in the list. We have ID as the number two item in the list. <laughs> and then and then we have number uh, and then we have seven, six, four, nine as the third element of the list. And I guess the this first number is what I identified as the on off switch on every device. So then we're going to utilize this TBL uh, and I'm totally blanking on what T stands for, but then we have bang and then list. Mm, Can't not recall for some reason, it doesn't matter. Uh, but basically we are sending out, uh, again, we're setting the value 
of uh, the on off from the armed track. Is the track armed? And then we're using this toggle here to set the value of this dollar sign one is the variable. So we're setting the value of the eventual live object. And then right here, we're taking that parameter ID and we are uh, sending it all the way through. We're adding the ID back into it because when we choose it from this list, we're just taking that third element of the list, the param parameters ID and then 7649. And then finally, um, we are again, identifying or defining the object, the live dot object that we want to control, which is not only an object or a device, but we've actually identified the specific uh, on off button inside of the live device. And then we're setting the value to match whatever the live observer arm is. And that is how I created this, uh, created this patch. Uh, and I will include it. I think I can include this in the description below. You'll be able to get this. When I have this device on each one of these tracks, let's see here, right here. Uh, when I go to record this, it automatically turns on these devices, no matter how many devices are on the track. And then also sends it to my uh, C send output, which is how I do uh, my live looping. And we will see if, uh, if this will work here. Uh, let me put on some headphones. Right, then, oh, let's say I want to uh, utilize another instrument, maybe a piano here. Let's see. Uh, I have all that's missing. All righty here. That's one, two, three. you enjoyed this and that's how I made this max for live device it works well for me maybe it'll work for you